A while back I put out a video on making organic shaped hand grips in FreeCAD, things that will be easy and intuitive to grab onto and smooth and curvy. Uh, a viewer had reached out and asked me about a problem they've had with back bumps on the handle and I would like to go through today how to more tightly control uh, the surfaces that you would find in uh, FreeCAD so that you can control where the bumps go. Uh, to do that, how about I import an image? I think most of you probably know, but if anybody doesn't, uh, to do that we go in the uh, image workbench. You want to create a planar image in the 3D space. We're going to do this on the XZ plane, and we can adjust the position as well. Uh, I want to go to part design. There's our image, by the way. And in part design, let's create a sketch. And I would like to do so on the uh, XZ plane. So there's our XZ plane. And now I can adjust my sketch with when I can see kind of the triad or the origin. Uh, this isn't a perfect image to do, but I think it's close enough for the purposes of this video. On the image plane, we'll go to placement, position, and I'm just going to adjust this uh, dynamically in our sketch. All right, we're going to bring this up till it is just right around the origin. Maybe we're going to say 21.5-ish. And then in the y direction, we can scoot this back off our sketch plane just a bit so we have some breathing room. All right, um, going back normal, of course that button takes us normal. Next thing I want to do is uh, begin sketching and I'm going to start off by making a B spline. We're going to start right on this plane where we've decided the origin will be the base of our handle. And I'm going to add some profile here. there. Good. Now I just make a few adjustments going up to make sure that my profile uh, relatively matches my handle. As with any sketch image, proximity will do because the image itself has a lot of error in it with the perspective view and everything else that goes into these kinds of images. But we can get a pretty close fit of our profile. And for the purposes of this video, I think we uh, will successfully illustrate a concept on how to surface this a little bit tighter than we have in the past. I'm going to ignore this part and just make this the top of the handle, uh, but the workbenches that we're going to use should have no problems with uh, if you want to make this profile smooth. So I'm going to say Shift V. Uh, that'll be 43.71, let's get that 42, maybe 42 and a half millimeters. And we'll call that the uh, overall height of our handle. I'm not too concerned with the scale of this. Of course, this would be too small in real life. If you wish to scale the image, you just make a sketch with a line at whatever length you want the, say, overall height to be or whatever other dimension is important to you. And then you can resize the image to match the sketch that you've produced. Uh, but again, scaling is not really important here to just illustrate this concept. All right, so we have this done. The next thing I want to do is make another line, and we're going to snap this right onto the origin here. And let's go to our tasks. Uh, I want to auto remove constraints and auto update. I'm going to go here and here and add a horizontal constraint. Again, use the keyboard monitor down here if you ever wonder what hotkeys are being used. And uh, let's add a vertical constraint. And my oh my, that did not snap at all. There we go. Um, so we should be good there. I'm going to make this a little bit taller, actually. 
44, that's fine. And we seem to match our profiles pretty well. So we're gonna close that. That gives us a nice springboard uh, for some of the next sketches. Let's go and sketch on the same plane, the uh, ZX plane. And from here, we can mark the front of the handle. Oh, but I want a B spline, I grabbed a circle for some reason. All right, perfect. Let's grab an edge import tool so we don't, uh, you know, kill ourselves if we have to update later. I'm gonna add in a horizontal here to ensure that these end on the same height. We'll have a flat top handle in this case. I've got a Toyota Supra that I've had since 2006 and it also has a Hurst shifter in it. Just love that car. Let's go with a vertical here. Coincident. And it looks like I need to do a few adjustments here. I just repartitioned my hard drive and that included reinstalling this operating system. So this is actually the first time I've opened this version of FreeCAD. Should be interesting. Let's add in our constraint. And that looks good for my purposes. The last thing to do is add in this line. Something tells me that I need to adjust my settings for automatically adding constraints here because that's no good. We'll merge those vertical. All right, and so this line should be fully constrained and all of our degrees of freedom come from our spline. So we're gonna go ahead and close that. Next thing to do is sketch out uh, a bottom image or what the bottom cross section might look like. For that, we'll go on the XY plane and create a sketch. Um, I want to, within this tool, and again, my sketchers, my toolbar is just acting kind of funny here. So let me bring some of this down again. That's a bit more like it. Oh, will uh, bring in our edge import tool here and here. This time I want to do a three-point spline. Here, here, and here. And a second three-point spline. Here, here, and here. We'll assume that these are going to be a uh, symmetric relation, right? So I'm actually going to select these three points if I can ever uh, click all of them. Horizontal, well, I guess I'm going to go with vertical. I misjudged how the sketch would be orienting itself. So we're going to go vertical on uh, both these points and then we can combine these into one. And I'm sure, yep, that's good. So that ensures that both of these uh, spline sections end vertical to this line, which is what we want. Uh, I can add a symmetric constraint from up here, here and here. And of course I've added it in the wrong order. Here, center, here, just like that. Finally, I can make one coincident onto this axis. And we'll add in a vertical dimension on here. And you know, what width do we want? A little bit subjective. Uh, maybe we'll go with something like, well, four is pretty big. Uh, three, again, this is not scaled to the real size of a handle, right? This is just a concept of how to do it. I don't care about making a 
dimensionally accurate handle for this. It probably wouldn't add much value. Okay, uh, we have four degrees of freedom. There it is. So next, we'll merge that. We've got two degrees of freedom now. None of which I think is all that substantial. So we'll close that, and you can see we've kind of wireframed out uh, the side of our finger grips. Let's focus now on sketching on the same plane, which would be the top view, the XY plane. And on part design, we'll create a sketch. Thankfully, the toolbars remembered how I like them oriented this time. We'll grab endpoint, endpoint with the edge import tool. And finally, this point here, getting normal to the sketch, um, same approach, three point spline. And we want to make sure that these are vertical with the V key. We'll take these points and merge or make them coincident, which is probably more free CAD lingo. We're going to combine those points make sure that we're horizontal so that we are always ending on tangent. Let's do the same. We go with vertical, horizontal, All right, that um, should be enough to know what we're on about there. Lastly, let's sketch on the plane that goes through these points. So we'll grab, I believe it is the uh, ZY plane. That's edge import. These. And uh, this should be pretty simple. I can edge import the uh, point that we originally had. <laughs> and I'm just going to go straight up here. We're going to make these equal. I can go to my height and say horizontal. And I do need to go into my settings and uh, adjust the way that these lines are interacting. So we'll close that. All right, so in the last video, we just had a single sketch down here. And we would uh, just, you know, do this all in one go. To do this more tightly, um, let's get going with the uh, other workbench, the uh, curved surfaces workbench, or curved shapes workbench, I think it is. Um, I don't have that here, so we go tools, add on manager, and under workbenches, we'll go with curved shapes. We'll install and we'll close. So we'll need to restart FreeCAD. I'll save and restart now. And from here, we're going to say curve shapes. And I want to select this sketch, this sketch, and this sketch. And notice uh, we are given our curved array. When I select this, we can choose uh, surface is true to get an idea of how our surface looks. That's not enough items to really match our uh, shape, so we're going to move this up to something like 50. And there we can see we match that handle pretty well. Uh, so 
that looks reasonable to me, but we have a little uh, surface issue down here. Uh, if I offset the start, maybe 0.01 to 0.1, there we go. So a little bit of offset in there goes a long way, it looks like. Maybe 0.05, no, 0.075. Okay, let's do 0.07. And we're looking good up top. Next thing, um, I want to select, and I can use the space bar to hide my surface, but I'll select this guy here and here. Surface. Oh, I've added two. So we're going to come down to this curved array. We're going to surface this as true. We're going to uh, say 50 items and uh, even though it's looking pretty good down here since we offsetted one we would probably be wise to offset the other so let's say offset the start 0.07 okay so we have our two surfaces here that would be the handle that we wish to reflect. And you can see because we did this in two parts, any curvature that we have stops at that seam between the two. They're both straight at that point. Uh, so the next thing to do is convert this to a solid. And there's a few ways of uh, doing this. I'm gonna go with a simple method here of creating another sketch. much better. I can edge import here and I can edge import down here. As you can see, um, I've locked the sketch onto the widest part of the handle, which I've done intentionally because of the way that my curvature lines up. I can choose a, a vertical relation here and add in a vertical dimension of, you guessed it, 0.07, as we do not want the solid that will generate from the sketch to uh, go below our surface, or we may not work properly. So how high do we want to go? Let's add a horizontal constraint. We have one more degree of freedom. Yep, over here. <laughs> so I can also, we might as well uh, just combine these, but uh, we'll add in a vertical, which is the same as saying, uh, you know, create a coincident for the point. Next thing we'll do, we're going to add in uh, an extrusion. So actually, we can just close out here, tasks, pad, and I'm going to say uh, symmetric. And we just want to cover the entire handle. There we are. Next thing, uh, we can use the part workbench for multi-body modeling. Let's go with this um, pad here. And I'm going to hold the control and choose a curved array in that order. The order is important. And I choose slice apart from here on the part workbench. We can go into our uh, little folder that shows up in the history tree. And we have the slice that we've made with the surface. I'm going to choose the part that I don't want and hit the delete key. Well, let's repeat the same pattern. I'm going to choose my extrude and then choose my slicing tool second, as that's very important. We choose slice apart. And I go into my folder and hit the delete key on the part that I don't want. And uh, there we have a nice solid handle that's based on the picture that uh, we've just uh, sketched off of. So I can hide my image plane and use the space bar to hide uh, the sketches that I've used to make this part. Uh, finally, it looks a bit more realistic to go with uh, the shaded view. And we can even change our appearance to maybe something like chrome, something cool and nice looking. That didn't seem to change though. 
So I'll highlight my slice here, view, appearance, chrome. All right, so we've been able to generate this, and I think most cases this is great, right? This is fine. Uh, but if you are upset about the straight seam that we have, I'm going to show a principle on how to get rid of that and make it a little bit more organic. Uh, but I think in most cases, everyone is going to be happy with uh, how we've made this. So again, if you have an exceptional situation, we can blend that in even better. And let's go through how to do that. I'm going to roll my model back here. I made some fillets off uh, screen. So we're going to get rid of our slices. And I'm just hitting the delete key. And get rid of this slice, right? So we've got our pad, which I can hide with the space bar. And there's our curved arrays. I'm also going to get rid of my curved arrays with the delete key and show my sketch. Okay. From here, let's uh, edit our first sketch. And I've got my straight vertical line. That ultimately is what becomes that seam that I was just talking about. So let's make that for construction. And I'm going to go with a rim point arc. Oh, and I've made that completely the wrong concavity. All right, so we've got this nice arc here. We're going to say tangent horizontal. Actually, you know what? Let's highlight this point and add a horizontal dimension at negative 5.75 millimeters and uh, that oh, that should be a constrained arc looks like it is so we're going to close that we're going to go to sketch one now and we can conveniently make that for construction let's add in an imported edge here let's add in a three-point arc that goes between these two points and we'll add in a tangent relation there And coincident, coincident. All right, so this arc itself is constrained, even though the rest of the sketch is not. I'm going to go to sketch four, and I'll simply hit the delete key. So we need to replace those lines with something that matches this contour. Let's go to part design. Let's go to the tree and highlight the ZX plane create a datum plane, and highlight the outermost uh, point of our sketch. Okay, uh, we'll begin sketching on this plane, and I can hide this plane with the space bar, importing this point into our sketch. And I delete I got out of my sketch for a second there. Let's go with our three point arc, adding in a tangent, uh, highlight the same plane. Now, doing the other side, All right? We're doing this in two separate sketches instead of the same sketch like we've done before. So, we start sketching here. And in a horizontal, in fact, why don't we just make those coincident and delete the horizontal. And we'll add in a tangent and we're fully constrained there. So now we've got these uh, lines, right? So let's go with adding uh, curve shapes. And I'll highlight here, here, and I have to highlight both of the new sketches that we've made since they're different sketches. Selecting the first option again. And something went kind of funny there, so let's delete that. I want to select here, here, 
here and here. There we go. Um, as before, we're going to make this a surface that is true. We'll change this to uh, 50. And we have our favorite prolapse. Uh, I'm actually going to save this and maybe I can change this to something more dramatic and see if that clears it out. So we still have that with 100. 200 we have it. And uh, we've crashed there. So let's bring that back up. Um, so we have our curved surface. Looks like we can't really uh, change it with the number of elements. 40 is there, 30, 10, right? So I'm going to stick to my favorite 50, and we're going to offset the start by 0.07. You might be hearing my beautiful daughter in the background. Uh, from here, we'll do the same thing, right? We'll highlight here. In fact, let's actually hide that with the space bar, highlight here. And that must be the first profile I select. Then here, then these two. And we're going to go to Curve Shapes, add this thing. And uh, with this highlighted, we can make this a surface. And we're going to go with 50 items. And we're going to go to this curved array here. At this point, I'm comfortable hiding all of my sketches just for a nicer display. Show my pad. With this highlighted, I choose a curved array. And we'll go with a part here and slice apart. And we go here and then we choose our slice, we choose our curved array, slice apart. And delete that. And there's a handle with a far less obvious seam because it's curved and it follows more of the contour of the handle. Uh, because we've changed the position of the seam, this part is smooth instead of carrying on these bumps a little bit further. So I think we've made an even better handle here. I'll make both of these available for download on GrabCAD. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.